If you have your Bible tonight, let's just go to Genesis chapter 1 and I am going to read just a few verses. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 says the following. Then God said, let us make men in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Somebody say dominion. dominion. Somebody say dominion. dominion. Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping. Everybody say creeping every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and let's read also from chapter 2 of verse 15 then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it and let's read chapter 3 and verse 1 now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made and he said to the woman the serpent has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree in the garden Let's just pray this simple prayer out loud after me. Say, Lord Jesus, open my heart to your word. Lord Jesus, open my heart to your spirit. Lord Jesus, open my heart to your faith. Amen. I want to speak to you today a message that will be con called Conquering Creepiness. Um, I know that uh, there are things that happen in our lives that are creepy. And the Bible says that he has given us dominion over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Including every creeping thing that happens in our life. And yes, this is a sarcastic term for the prince of darkness. This is a sarcastic term for the kingdom of darkness. But in reality, there is nothing sarcastic about his activity in people's lives. And if you can summarize all of the demonic activities in people's lives, there will be one word that will suit for all of it. Creepiness. Yeah. Amen. I want us to understand one thing is that everything that we obtain everything we get from the Lord must be maintained we must understand as Christians is that healing can be lost Jesus said to one man in John chapter 5 he says don't commit sin or else the healing you received you will lose it we see that deliverance can be lost. Jesus said a parable that one person was delivered but because his house wasn't possessed by the Lord that eventually seven, demon, seven more demons came in and it was worse for that house later days than it was in the beginning. Jesus said in Luke chapter 15 that the coin can be lost, the sheep can be lost and a son can be lost. Samson teaches us that the anointing can be lost. We know that uh, in the Bible that uh, many different things that people can obtain, they have the chance and the opportunity to lose it. It's easier to obtain something than to maintain that thing which you obtain. Most of us know it's a lot easier to get married than to stay married. I mean some of the famous people like uh, Kim and Chris who got married and their marriage only lasted 72 days, which is not a lot just about two months and the wedding was so expensive millions of dollars but they didn't have enough character in them to maintain the marriage past 72 days I mean Brittany and Jason they were married for only 52 hours it's a world record a beautiful wedding a lot of guests but not very long 52 hours because it's easier to obtain something than to maintain it a prodigal son obtained inheritance really quickly but he did not have the character and did not have the lifestyle to maintain what he obtained and so I want us to understand tonight that whatever we obtain must be maintained whatever we obtain from God must be maintained your car must be maintained your body must be maintained your finances they must be maintained Amen. relationships they must be maintained if you get married it must be maintained and so many people prepare you know six seven months for the wedding pay you know twenty to fifty thousand dollars for the wedding and they put so much effort for one day but they put so little effort into a marriage which lasts after the wedding day you, everything you get everything you obtain must be maintained but the second truth is also very important is everything that's maintained will multiply see whatever we don't maintain we will lose but whatever we maintain will multiply and this is the beautiful subject is that sometimes we want the multiplication 
and we ask the Lord say Lord give me more when in reality the multiplication can exist in the maintenance of what the Lord has given us when we treasure what God has given to us, when we value it correctly, when we live on the budget, when we go to the gym, exercise and eat healthy, when we have date nights and prioritize not screaming and throwing plates as a way to send a message to our spouse, when we live our life maintaining our marriage, maintaining our health, maintaining our finances, something happens miraculously, supernaturally, things tend to multiply. Things that are not maintained tend to break and we end up being broke. I, I heard this, testim uh, this, this testimony. It's not a testimony. It's, uh, I heard a story of uh, Shaquille O'Neal. And it has a very interesting story of actually how he got into basketball. What happened with Shaquille O'Neal is that he actually was very slow and he was not allowed to be in the basketball team. His coach said he will never amount to anything on the basketball court. There's a whole deal of how he persevered through. And so what happened is that when Shaquille O'Neal finally signed the deal with the NFL, he got one million dollars. When he got one million dollars, Shaquille O'Neal spent one million dollars in 30 minutes, which is too fast. His banker gave him a phone call and he says that if you're gonna go at this rate not of making money but at this rate of spending your money he says you will end up like most of the NFL players which 70% of NFL players go broke after two years of retiring and 60% after five years of retiring some of you heard Mike Tyson who would make 40 million dollars in a fight and he filed bankruptcy or Vander Holyfield who made 240 million in his career and his house was foreclosed on just a few years ago. So a lot of people who make big money they lose them so fast and they actually become worse financially than you are. And so his banker calls this man Shaquille O'Neal and he says you need to uh, change something because the way you're spending your money if you spend 1 million in 30 minutes I can only imagine how fast you can spend 200 million and this is the moment where Shaquille O'Neal realized that I can be like the statistic that making big money I work so hard to make money I play so hard I exercise so hard I go to the gym I do everything to to make money and I can be a statistic of people who are broke why because I do not know how to maintain money come on, come on. he goes back to college as a basketball player and finishes his associates finishes his bachelor's finishes his master's and here Shaquille O'Neal is graduating with his PhD in finance management and as of today this basketball player is an owner of 155 five guys burger restaurants 17 auntie annie restaurants 150 car washes 40 24 fitness centers a shopping center a movie theater and several things at las vegas and he makes 22 million dollars per year which is about 423,000 a week not a lot compared to uh, other people but what makes him today a very wealthy man is not because he makes a lot of money he actually doesn't play basketball his income is growing not because of what he's doing but because of how he's maintaining what he obtained most of us here we are convinced if I can only get a job that can pay me big money I will be wealthy really if I could only get a someone who is so handsome if I could get a quarterback of my high school as my husband I will be the happiest girl in the world not really if I could only marry to somebody who is so beautiful not really that simply might mean that your marriage will last 72 days or 75 days because the secret of life is not to obtain but to learn how to maintain what you obtain so it can multiply for the glory of God can somebody say amen so I want us today to make a decision not just to focus on obtaining something but to focus strategically in your life how to maintain and how to manage what you get because when you manage it it has the power to multiply. 
when it's not managed it has the power to make your life like the life of prodigal son coming back smelling like a pig looking like a pig talking like a pig and living like a pig though he was a multi-millionaire just a few months ago why because whatever is obtained and is not maintained will be missed will be loosed and we become people who are like statistic broke busted divorced shattered lives unwanted things in our life and so I want to just encourage you this evening that what God gives you it requires your attention sometimes we think that if I pay a heavy price to get it it will take care of me you know sometimes we as husbands kind of have this or men when we are in our time in our time to find a, a beautiful lady you know we, we change the way we talk we change the way we live we change our attitude we, we change everything about our life we wash our car we clean our socks and we you know buy the best perfume cologne and we do our hair we trim our beard I mean we look our best and then when we are around this person we want to impress we we really put a lot of attention into her we don't check Facebook when we are on a date we don't forget her birthday we don't forget I mean we even remember days like when the first time I saw you the first time you saw me the first time we drink coffee the first time we went to the mall the first time we saw this store or that store I mean we have anniversary for like every minute of our day because we are so obsessed we are focused on obtaining her and of course any girl who has any common sense and if you are somewhat decent after a few months will respond back by saying I'm all yours take me and she lives has this fantasy that if this is how you treated me to get me I can only imagine how you would treat me once I will be yours and then your deep, deep imagination turns into your greatest nightmare when you realize this homeboy who was so passionate to get you once he got you leaves you on the side says hey you're my trophy great now let me go get other stuff and then the woman gets ignored because you must understand one thing about life the reason why it's hard to maintain what we get is because the more you maintain something you get more things to maintain and life becomes about juggling balls you see when you're young and you're living with your parents your only ball that you have to hold on to is your school and some of you cannot even hold that you throw it in where did it go and you got f's and you're there saying oh God send me a husband a husband you can't even hold on to your homework and then you grow out go out of your parents house and you get married and then you have two balls at the same time and you think that is challenging wait until you have children and I don't know about that ball but I heard that it's it's a little bit more complicated wait and then you have ministry you have a home group and you have these five things and after a while you say I'm going crazy and you wanted to be an adult because for most of you being an adult means I can drive a car and I can eat whenever I want to and I can watch whatever I want to you forgot that being adult you have two hands and you just have more balls that you have to juggle through that's why it becomes so difficult for many people to maintain because they say I can maintain my room if it's the only room I have to maintain I can manage my car I can manage the oil change in my car but when it comes to maintaining my marriage maintaining my finances maintaining my career maintaining my calling and maintaining the church life and maintaining my friends after they are like I don't have enough time and the secret of juggling the balls is that you don't hold on to one too long each is always rolled each is always released and that's exactly what it is you don't ignore your marriage when you get married you don't ignore your finances when you get the promotion you don't ignore your spiritual life when you get the breakthrough you don't ignore this area why each area must juggle each area must go in at the same time the most important thing that we have to maintain is not really our finances and it's not really our marriage and it's not even our church going it's our mind mind management is the highest priority for an overcomer because the victory does not begin from outside of us the victory starts from within us and our mind is the root of our feelings it's the root to our actions and becomes the root of our destiny 
managing your spiritual life without managing your mind will prove very soon abortive your mind is extremely crucial to your life and you can clean your car you can get on a budget you can clean your room you can even have time to be I'm with this friend with this friend I am doing all of these things but if your mind is a cluttered messy garbage can your life very soon will line up to the cleanness and the clutterness of your mind how messy the mind is will result in how messy the room is going to be, how messy the car is going to be, how messy the relationships are going to be, and how messy your spiritual life is going to be, how messy your emotions will be. Every single area of your life will sooner or later line up to the what's going on in your head. And the average person thinks 65,000 thoughts a day. 90% of all your thoughts are repetition of yesterday's thoughts. You only think 10% of new thoughts every single day. The biggest lie that we believed is this. Thoughts is something I can't control. Well, I can control my car. And the moment I stop controlling my car, I'm going to go to the dealer and return it. Some of me men are convinced they can control their wives. But all parents are convinced we can control our children. And all the parents said, nah. <laughs> not really not all the time but we love things that we can control you would never ride a bicycle that you cannot control but when we come to the area of the mind we are convinced your mind has a mind of its own it means you wake up and you come to your mind and your mind is this big guru master who sits there and says today i am depressed be depressed and most of us are believing the fact that you cannot control your mind but the bible says in philippians that whatever is true whatever is holy whatever is of good report think on these things somehow the bible is telling us your mind is not your master your mind is your servant that means you choose what thoughts you think you choose what what goes through your head you choose not your circumstances not your friends not your life not your feelings but you determine what is in your head every single day and whatever is in your head is going to determine how well your life is going to be in psalm 1 it says the blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, who doesn't stand in the path of sinners, who doesn't sit in the seat of scornful. But it says that he delights in the law of the Lord and he meditates in it day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Brings forth fruit in his season, his leaves will not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. Why is this man blessed? Because his head is not a junkyard. He chooses his thoughts. He's not blessed because everything in his life is good. He's not blessed because all of his dreams have come to pass. He is blessed because he wakes up in the morning and he tells his mind what the mind's gonna think. He looks over the phone, people have said this, the statistic has said this. He looks over his life, he sees his finances, he sees this and that, but at the same time he says, I may not control my everything, but this is my control and I choose what I think about in Jesus' name. Your mind is either a thermometer which reflects the temperature of your life or it's a thermostat that changes the temperature of your life. You determine the thoughts that you think. If you tell me that you cannot control where the table and the chair and the carpet and the plates and the silverware, silverware and, the, and the spoons lay in your house that they somehow control you. You walk around and the spoon tells you what to do. Have you ever tried that trick on your parents when they say clean up your room? You say, mom, the towel told me, don't mess with me. How foolish is that? But we have the audacity to come to God who tells us, think on these things. We say, God, I can't change. Those thoughts are so powerful. They, they scared me. You are the captain of your own ship. The lie of the devil is that your mind is your master. God says your mind is your servant. You choose the thoughts that you're going to think. And the most important thing that you must maintain as a Christian, if you want to be a conqueror, is here. It's your thoughts. 
Amen? We've got to maintain our thoughts. We've got to manage that our thoughts, that whatever, whatever is in our head is positive. Whatever is in our head doesn't reflect our mood. That it doesn't reflect our circumstances. It doesn't reflect our bank account. That it doesn't reflect how people treat us. And it doesn't reflect what's going on around us. But it reflects what God says. And this is not about you getting in the shower and you, you're fighting with your thoughts. This is not fighting with your thoughts. Because some of you know when you start fighting with your thoughts, at the end, you always lose. And the thoughts win. The best way to do it is to bring the word of God like a bazooka and unload it. Meditate in the scriptures. Bible says to memorize, to meditate. Where you simply, when your mind is preoccupied, you don't wait for your mind to come down and then you're going to think about the word of God. No, you force it. You walk around, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay down at the green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Though I walk through the valley, oh, valley of the shadow of death, I know that you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you repeat that about 20 times and you realize how all of the demons in your thoughts. And you feel so much better. You walk around like a champion. Why? Because you just managed and cleaned up your head. Some of you, you clean everything in your life except your mind. And nobody can see your mind, but we can see it through your attitude. We can see it through your feelings. We can see it through other areas of your life. Manage your thinking. Can somebody say amen? amen. And so today, I want to remind you of, of how do we manage our life? How do we manage our thinking? How do we manage our life? And there's a few simple principles. One principle that I would uh, tell you about is that we sow good seeds. We sow, when we sow good seeds, we can manage things. And this is what I just said about the Word of God. You, you, you force the Word of God inside of your mind. You force good seeds in your life. Seeds, when you're married, simply means that you speak kind words to your wife. That once in a while, uh, maybe once in two days, you, you notice something beautiful. And you always do about your, your wife, especially someone you've been married with. But you, after a while, you become silent. You're like, I appreciate it in the heart. And it's the thought that matters. But it's not the thought that matters if it's not expressed. And you just express it to your wife. Say, you know what? I really think your nose is very beautiful. <laughs> and you have no idea how much love sparks just by that one simple compliment. You don't have to compliment for 20 hours like you did when you were dating. But just you sow a good seed. When it comes to finances, the way you maintain your finances is you sow a good seed. It means you make a decision that I don't need to compete with my neighbor. I don't need to get this because she got that. I don't need to wear this because he wears that. I don't need to compete with no one. I don't need to live like I am wealthy when I am not. When I get wealthy, I'll live like a wealthy. But right now, well, I'm a blessed man. So I'm going to live like a blessed man. But not super wealthy yet. You sow good seeds. The second principle is that you remove the weeds. In every relationship, in everything in life, there is weeds. And the weeds, they kill the seeds, Jesus said. And so when we remove the weeds, something will happen. We, have allow, we allow the seeds to begin to sprout and to begin to grow. In finances, the weeds are plastic, credit card debt. The weeds are impulsive purchases. It's on sale. I know I will need it five years from now. You have 20 billion... 25,000 things in your closet for tomorrow and you broke like a joke and so you you remove the seeds and you free yourself you go and you shop and you forget everything at home so you are not by impulse you're not buying anything and God will bless you remove the weeds out of your life when it comes to dating it's interesting that we do that intentionally when you date you compliment another person it's amazing how much fruit of the spirit you exemplify when you're dating how patient you are, how long suffering you are. When the person takes 30 minutes to get ready and this characteristic of patience is just sprouts. Self-control. You will never say a profanity, a bad word. When you're dating, what happens? Your phone is turned off. Your parents can't reach you for days after that. Why? Because you're removing the weeds. You are so focused on this person. And what happens is that when you get married, what happens is that when you begin to manage your finances we, we forget about that and we allow the weeds to grow and then there is no love and people go to the court and say well we fell out of love you know what you stop doing you stop removing stop planting the seeds and you stop removing the weeds you didn't fall out of love you just stopped working see God calls Adam before we get to number three God calls Adam God creates everything and the scripture says then he makes a man 
he puts the man in the middle of his creation garden of eden a paradise and we read today in chapter 2 of genesis that god said i want you to tend to it i make it you manage it i make it you manage it it's interesting that god did not make the world that will not require a man to maintain it god did not create the world in such a way that it's self-maintained it needs a man to maintain it this is a principle that applies almost to every area of our life anything the lord makes man maintains from the beginning god has set this in motion if i make healing you maintain it if i make victory you maintain it if i make you a spouse you better maintain them if i make you a blessing you better maintain it because god makes a man maintains see and the man has to sow seeds and remove weeds for example when it comes about health you know that 50 up to 60 percent of people's sicknesses today will be cured those of us who are younger if we only sleep fast eat right and exercise and you don't have to pay for pills that cost three hundred dollars a month and you don't have to do extraordinary things just simple sleep enough not three hours a day and think that you're a warrior or a marine <laughs> because well you 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 deprive yourself of sleep eat healthy not at nine o'clock in the evening and then you miss breakfast and you don't eat eggs you need to eat eggs that's where you're gonna get protein especially organic eggs prophet tb joshua even himself said he says many people will be cured immediately if they will only sleep well many people when you see people who lose weight you see them lose diabetes you see them lose high blood pressure you see them lose other sicknesses depression lose everything why because when you sow good seeds called eating right sleeping exercising and you remove the bad weeds junk food and so many other things you immediately get a miracle called your health but when you get a miracle and you don't sow good seeds and you don't remove weeds you lose the miracle and it's not because of God but because of your negligence come on, come on, amen. Amen. amen but God tells Adam maintain this garden it means plant good things remove the weeds and but there is one more thing because I know people here and myself included there will be areas in your life where sowing seeds removing weeds will not get the job done where you will honestly do your best in physical health, exercising, eating right, and you'll still be sick. And you see the other person who doesn't do half of that and running like a healthy bull. You will be saving money, living on a budget, staying away from all kinds of impulsive things. I mean, you're becoming so frugal that you're becoming a little crazy. And yet you cannot put ends meet. You will be a person who, who tries to honor his wife or honor her husband or, or honor the kids or pray for the kids, love the kids and try to do everything kids but they still go just crazy. There is one more thing that Adam was required to maintain his garden and this third thing is not mentioned in none of the self-help books. This is a mystery that every book in a public library says it's a mystery and we don't know nothing about it all of these things sow a seed remove weeds they are in the bible and people did not come up with that God came up with that and people just borrowed it from God but there is one more thing that is very very important and without this you are not going to be fully victorious in your life and this is the thing where Adam missed he didn't miss this he didn't miss this but this is the area where Adam failed in you want to know what this area is okay kill the snake kill the snake see Adam did not have a problem with the seeds 
Adam did not have a problem with the removing the weeds. But there was one thing that Adam had is that there was a snake. And remember what God told Adam, have dominion over every creeping thing. And the snake was crawling, creeping. It was on the ground. And it came into the garden. And the Lord gave him dominion over the snake. I want, I, want, I want you to know one thing. If you do not address the issue of the snake in your life, you cannot fully maintain your life. There will be areas where the snake is permitted. Control is out of your hands. The areas where snake is not confronted is the areas, every area is good. But in this area, you don't have control because the snake has the control. You may say, Vlad, if the Lord gives me a paradise, he will never allow a snake into my paradise. Well, if the snake was permitted into Adam's paradise, it might be permitted to yours. Come on now. Yeah. We have to sow the seeds, remove the weeds, and kill the snake. If the snake is not addressed, our efforts will be limited. They are not worthless. Our efforts, they are important. But if the snake is the issue, your efforts are limited. And Adam failed at this area. There was this testimony at the Scone Church of All Nations this week about a girl who had needles in her stomach. The doctor has found 18 needles and you can see these over here on the screen. Those of you who will be listening to this, you can see this, but there is 18 needles that the doctor has removed from her stomach. And the interesting part is for every needle that they said that the doctor removes, five more reappear. Until all these holes in her stomach became appeared and she still has needles and they do not get removed. The interesting part is this woman, this young lady, she cannot remember she never swallowed a needle. None of her family had needles. She cannot force it and pinpoint when did it happen. She does everything she can, you know, sow the seed, remove the weed. She went to the doctor, went through the surgery and this is supposed to fix it. But if there is a snake, the sowing of the seed, removing of the weed is not sufficient because there has to be one more step which deals with the snake and causes the sowing of the seed removing of the weed to be effective and this is what prophet tb joshua said he said when this is a curse if you remove one needle five will reappear he said when you remove the curse then the doctor can remove the needle or sometimes the needle will just dissolve right away in the body and therefore he says people come to church not just to hear the teaching love your husband love your wife raise your children manage your money go exercise do everything people come to the church for that too but we come to the church that in case you're doing that and you're noticing it's hitting the wall remember the first thing God has done in the world was to give a garden to a man and he a snake was there and he gave a man an authority and he says to, to tend your garden you have to not just sow the seeds remove the weeds you have to trample over the snake if you don't remove the snake your efforts will be limited I'm not saying they're worthless or pointless or completely pathetic they're just limited they're just not sufficient because your issue is with a snake a normal sickness the doctors can treat when a sickness is a curse the medicine cannot treat that because medicine cannot fight a snake only the name of Jesus can fight a snake when overweightness or obesity it's just a result of not eating right. You begin to eat right and everything is fine. When there is a snake behind it, no amount of exercise can remove the sicknesses and that in your life. You have to stand in your authority as Christian and fight the snake. You may say, the snake can cause that? Oh yes. When an anxiety is just you're overwhelmed, not sleeping enough, you get eight hours of sleep and you feel better. 
but when the spirit is behind anxiety you can sleep 12 hours you wake up and you feel more anxious now oversleeping than you would not sleeping enough because the snake is behind it can somebody say amen, amen. i remember when derek prince shared a story that was really fascinating he shared a story of he is a, a preacher who already passed away he died but he mentioned that his parents passed on an inheritance to him that was very large um, sum of money but this inheritance was held back in legal things and he was not able to receive it and he said I lived tithing giving to God being generous but I could not put ends meet financially he adopted many children so he supported many many children orphanages but he says I was getting money I was not able to maintain money and one day when he was praying walking back and forth he saw in the room in his house a painting of a dragon and this is the painting his grandfather passed on to his father and they gave it to him because his great father his grandpa if I'm not mistaken went to China during a war and he got that painting from there so it was an Asian artifact that was passed on from generations it was very meaningful and very symbolic to him as he's praying Holy Spirit begins to bug his heart and begin to tell him that that dragon it's not a symbol of the Holy Ghost and you have to remove it from the wall and he started to argue with the Lord he said Lord you don't get it I don't care about the dragons he says it's, it's my grandfather that's what's important but he was obedient to the Lord he took the painting which was very valuable and meaningful and he removed the painting from the wall within one month the inheritance that for decades was held up was released and in one year his income doubled and he says when you walk into my house from that day he says you would sense a change in the atmosphere he says we prayed I fasted he, this man fasted a lot but he says something shifted in the atmosphere in my house finances beca it became a lot easier he says because I did everything I sowed the seed removed the weeds but he says I did not know that on the wall there was a snake hanging in my house now you may say Vlad what if I don't know what's hanging in my house the most amazing thing about God is he will never hide the truth from you if you be honest and sincere with God maybe not in one service maybe not in one day maybe not in the first prayer but if you be honest and sincere if there is something in your life that you realize it's a creeping little thing the, the creeping in your life that you are allowing to permit and that's causing the problem if you be honest with God God will show it to you come on, come on. he did it to David three years of famine no rain whatsoever people are dying the drought is happening and David comes to God and the Bible says the Lord told David it's because of Saul what he did to Gibeonites and David goes in removes the snake removes the curse removes this thing and the Bible says the rain came he did it to Joshua Joshua went to a city named Ai could not conquer it and Joshua comes back renders his garments lays on the floor all day says God why did you allow this to happen and God says Joshua get up he says there's a snake in the camp he says go remove the snake there's a curse in the camp and when you remove that then I will be with you and then you can go against your enemies Come on. he says it's not about your war now it's about dealing with the snake in your life and when you deal with the snake you will have the victory can somebody say amen, amen. I heard the testimony of church of a lady in Montana's church that really blessed me this particular lady before she was a Christian she was partying and having a good time with her friends and there was one friend that she had that was very jealous of her and this friend that was jealous of her did something in during the time when they were having fun and drinking and having all this time this friend took a cup what seemed like it was an alcohol and threw the threw, threw the alcohol in her face in this lady's face when they were 25 years old she was very young after that in a very short period of time this lady begins to get sick non-stop one sickness to another to another to another until she became she, they gave her disability status they gave her status that she cannot work and she accepted in her life that sickness is what literally what she's about she was known as the sickness lady it's if she gets rid of one sickness she gets another one she gets rid of one sickness she gets another one and that's exactly how she lived and she heard about this ministry of Vladimir Montan in Kiev she decided to come to their church for this college for 30 days and she comes there she gives her life to Jesus and in that college she gets a very big attack on her body and she feels excruciating pain they carry her into emergency and they find out she has a tumor that is growing so fast and they say that this tumor will damage some other organs and well they gave her not many weeks to live
they said we have to operate you right now right here she said please give me just one week let me go finish the bible school and then after that i will come here the reason why she did that is because this is not the first time she went on operation and it fixed a sickness but it never fixed the problem because other sicknesses came in so she goes back with a tumor knowing she has a countdown of her life her life death is staring in her face but she says God I know you can help me to restore my health and as the services are going on she says Lord I know this is not because I don't exercise this is not because I don't eat right this is not because I don't sleep right God I know there's something beyond that that I don't know about there has to be some kind of a snake as she's praying the Lord sends her an image in her mind and she sees the image when they were 25 years old sitting and drinking with her friend and the Lord shows it to her in a way that she can understand that her friend who poured glass of alcohol in her face did not pour the glass of alcohol but she poured the water that they would put on the graves and that they will use as charm on anyone that you want to wish bad luck on so that your best friend actually cursed you and it was immediately after that you are being sick and 50 percent of the battle happens when you recognize the snake her eyes got open right away holy spirit's fire just went through her body and she said lord god please forgive me lord god i break that in the very instant she said she felt fire go through her body and she felt such a relief after a week the college finishes she goes back for the scheduled surgery she lays on the bed and the doctors are going in and they cannot do the surgery without doing one more examination they examine her body and there is no tumor there why because the snake was removed and the problem was removed Adam did not remove the snake I am not trying to tell you today that oh to go start looking for a sin in your life what I'm saying seek the face of God God knows which creepy thing is in your life and he will reveal to you he will show you he will guide you and even if you don't know specific we all have one creepy snake together it's Satan demons and the curses yeah. the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 that the snake was very cunning the reason why this is so important is because the very nature of, of the devil is very slick Satan is slick he is crafty he is cunning I heard a story uh, last week some of you saw this on Fox News where a lady was washing her pigs in the house and then after she left she walks into a bathroom and she sees this python all around her toilet as she walked in and she says I did not see how the python slipped in I did not see how the python I didn't even see this why because there's one thing about snakes you have to know is they do not ring a doorbell when they come, come, on, come on. the snakes don't wait for you to open the door the snakes don't wait for you to welcome them the snakes don't get no for an answer they see an open door and they slick slowly shh, 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 come in and that's why if Satan is slick you gotta be smart if he is cunning you gotta be clever that's why Peter says be sober because your enemy is slick he is not coming there and says hey I am Satan here to destroy your life no 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 he comes in slick inside of your of our life and he wants to come in like that and because of that you and I must understand your authority today in the name of Jesus remember when Pharaoh was building an empire and he's over there he had his he got his life figured out he has slaves building pyramids for him he himself declares himself God but God uses this against Pharaoh there's a baby slicks slips into his court and Pharaoh feeds the baby not knowing he's feeding quote unquote a monster he pays the mother of Moses child services for nursing her own baby and little does Pharaoh know is that while he's building his empire he's feeding a snake in his own house and guess who crushed Pharaoh's life the very thing he fed in his own court that's exactly what happens with sin and many times people go to college develop relationships go to the gym lift weights drink vitamins do all of these things 
and at the same time spoon speed spoon feed a little snake on the side like oh this is harmless and if he begins to make noise I'm gonna do like Pharaoh did to Moses get out of my court move yeah it will leave and then could come back and you become toasted I want to tell you something Satan is slick you must be smart God gives us authority if we don't need the authority God wouldn't give it to us authority that God gave to Adam was not an accessory was not an option it was a necessity and Adam failed to use it uh, last weekend we went shooting with guys and this was my first time shooting a gun a rifle shotgun and rifle now let's for a moment imagine that Bryson over here he he has a lot of guns I was watching the testimony about the guy giving up guns and so I'm not sure that's probably not gonna apply to you no <laughs> But let's imagine, for example, Bryson comes and Bryson gives me a shotgun as a gift. I'm here indicating for Bryson gift for my July 22nd birthday. But let's just imagine Bryson gives me a shotgun or he gives me a rifle. He says, Vlad, I want to give you this gift. Now, I will be very, very appreciative. I'm like, man, this is so nice. But in reality, I don't need a gun. I have nobody creeping into my house that I need to use a gun against. I have nothing in my neighborhood that requires me having a gun. Now it will be nice so I can go and shoot those little things that we throw in the air so they splash. It will be nice for me to maybe post it on Instagram that I have a gun. It might be nice for me to go hunting but I'm not into a hunting style and so a gun would be sort of like in case. That's how most of us think about authority in Jesus. God gives us just like, I know you're not like one of the demon hunters, like you know those crazy demon hunters over there. You're not one of them. But let me give you authority just in case a demon once in 2,000 years comes by your house so you know what to do. God doesn't give you an authority just in case. He gives you an authority because he knows, Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. I give you authority. Why? Because the snake will be in your house. He says, it will not miss your house. Many people say, I don't use the authority in the name of Jesus. I, I, I don't even, that, that's not even necessary. That's not even important. I don't, that's not for me. Is it because the devil not attacking me? Perhaps he already got you. God gives authority, not like a gun. That you might need one day in 50 years. God gives us authority because we need this authority every single month sometimes every single week and sometimes during certain periods every single day this authority that is given to you my friend is not an option this is not a spare tire when the flat tire goes in this is authority that you live by every single day i want to encourage you today every creepy thing in my life or in your life you and i have authority over through the name of jesus christ You have authority. Can somebody say amen? amen. Say, I have, I have authority. Say, I have authority. I have authority. To recognize the snake is 50% of the battle. To resist him is other 50. Yes. When we recognize, then we can resist. When you recognize, then you can resist. People do not resist if they don't recognize. And I'm going to finish on this. Is that God tells Adam... God tells Adam that I give you the authority over the serpent. We see a snake come in in chapter 3 and I want you to notice something that if you did not notice. The Bible says that a snake came and talked to Eve. It didn't say it talked to Adam. What this means probably the Bible says in the New Testament that the Eve was deceived but Adam willfully fell which means the snake knew if I come to Adam Adam will say no what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Eve and I will defeat Eve and Eve will defeat Adam and that's exactly what happened the snake comes and does not talk to Adam the snake talks to Eve Eve is vulnerable and Eve yields to the snake and then the Eve comes and Adam is clueless 
that Eve's been talking to the snake. Adam just sees that his wife maybe craves new fruits. He just wants to make her happy. And here she is, comes in, being already infiltrated with the snake. And Adam just falls for it. Why? Because Eve has been with the snake. I want you to notice one thing. is that It's very important to see the snake. When, when the enemy begins to mess with your life, you're like, you know what? I, I see that, 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 that is the devil right there. It's another thing when you hear it. You wake up in the morning and you hear that voice. You're nothing. Or maybe, or just, just something, voices just begin to come in. Like, that's the devil right there. But it's a completely another thing. When the enemy shifts the focus and people who are close to you, he defeats. Not for their sake, but just to get to you. Ask Jesus. Satan fought him in the wilderness and Jesus faced him. Jesus says, I saw Satan fall. He saw this in people. But then Jesus is about to go to the cross and the enemy slips through the vocals of Peter and says, Jesus, please don't come. And Jesus like, man, that's creepy. Sounds like the devil. Because Jesus recognized, not say the enemy only I can hear, not the enemy I can see, but someone who can slip in sometimes through the people who are close to you. Conquers and defeats them just so he can get you and defeat you. That's exactly what happened with Samson. Philistines fought with him and Samson was the macho man until Philistines slipped in and conquered a woman who loved money more than she loved anything else and they conquered her and then she comes in and Samson is clueless that Delilah has been with a snake and then Delilah gets Samson. Philistines didn't get Samson. Delilah got Samson. Philistines got Samson through Delilah. You will experience this in your life where if you're married close friends where one person will be attacked by the enemy who is very close to you and in a certain day they will be bombarded discouraged and they will come and the enemy will try to do exactly same thing to you and in that moment you have to know like Jesus not rebuke him say you are such a hypocrite no 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 but you recognize the enemy is trying to attack and destroy you and you stand your ground and sometimes you come around the person that's what Adam should have been it's like Eve who you been talking to have you been talking to the snake Eve you craving that fruit has he been talking to you Eve it's okay everything's gonna be fine out in Jesus mighty name <laughs> and your back on the floor right now right now come on that's it Eve how you doing you don't want that fruit that's right give me a high five you think I'm joking well I don't do that in my family yet but but if I wake up and my wife is not in a good mood and like and you can sense it when you're married you just, just and I usually ask I just stop everything and say hey babe is everything okay so, and, and you know when the women who like, don't say it but they just act and, and I'm like, like I'm like what dream did you have last night I'm like who, who, who did you talk to I'm like oh, oh oh okay 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 let's go let's let's begin to let's pray let me just encourage because you can't react you don't know who attacked her and same thing with me when I walk in and I am upset and I don't want to talk and everything and she realizes that and now she would come in and she would say hey how was your day? What happened? And next thing that happens is she defeats the snake because the snake wants to defeat her too. Remember when Job was, was suffering and his wife came in and Job says, you speak like a foolish one. He said, you've been with a snake and you sound like a snake. She wasn't a bad woman. She just was defeated by a serpent. Eve was not a bad woman she was just deceived by a snake and then she comes in and brought the same thing on her husband one person in the family will be defeated sometimes in one particular time that's why the other person has to stand their ground and encourage the person because tomorrow it might be you that needs to be encouraged can somebody say amen, amen. when somebody dumps a bunch of load I remember you know being there was one lady who came to our church about eight years ago 
and she left this particular church I will not mention the name of this church it was a wonderful church I love the pastor very amazing miracles happened in this church and she came to our church says this pastor is so bad this pastor is so horrible he did so many bad things to me he did this and I cannot even mention because these are legal things and she just was third she would send me emails every other day this was like the first English speaking person in our church so I tried to like man we need to like mentor her I'm like 17 years old coming from high school using AOL dial-up internet to reply to her emails and I'm trying to like yeah this is bad and this is what she did she caused me to close my heart to this pastor whose church I would go for morning prayers he was one of the biggest inspirations to teach me how to pray and fast and now I come there and I'm like oh my goodness this man is a monster I'm like I know something about him nobody else does and she keeps feeding me feeding me feeding me she came to our church for about five six months you know the funny part she left our church and went back to the church and still thinks that pastor is a great man of God <laughs> when she did that I was so mad I remember I I punched my computer I was like this woman messed my head and from that day I remember this example of yesterday I make a decision no matter how upset you are how mad you are keep it to yourself because the serpent messed with your head you're not gonna mess with mine and when the serpent messes with my head don't let me mess with yours <laughs> can somebody say amen this is a both ways we need to be strong do not allow the enemy come in through other people in your life in Jesus name can somebody say amen